PPI has been an independent publisher of professional engineering exam review material since 1975. Our mission is simple. We want you to pass your exam. We've put together this presentation to introduce you to the engineering licensure process and to provide you with strategies to prepare for and pass the FE exam. First, I'll review the process of becoming a licensed engineer in the United States. Then, I'll provide an overview of the FE exam format and identify strategies to prepare for the FE exam. Finally, I will discuss some test-taking skills that will help you pass the exam. First, let's talk about the steps you need to take to become a professional engineer. In the United States, licensure is regulated by state licensure boards. Each board sets the education, work, and exam requirements for licensure in its state. The standardized licensure exams are developed, administered, and scored by the National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying, also called NCEES. Regardless of the state you live in, the first step for licensure is earning an engineering degree from an ABET accredited engineering program. ABET is the accreditation board for college and university engineering and technology programs. You can find a list of accredited programs on their website at www.abet.org. Next, you'll need to pass the Fundamentals of Engineering or FE exam. This may be taken when you are close to finishing your undergraduate engineering degree or at any time thereafter. To qualify to take a professional engineering or PE exam, you must also gain the experience required by your state board. Typically, you'll need to have at least four years of experience under the supervision of a professional engineer. Once you have passed the FE exam and you have obtained the required experience, you can take the PE exam that best matches your experience. NCEES offers PE exams in many engineering disciplines, such as civil, mechanical, structural, electrical, environmental, and chemical engineering, to name just a few. The FE exam is the first of the NCEES exams that you'll need to pass to become a licensed professional engineer. The FE exam is held twice each year in April and October. It is eight hours long and is divided into two sessions that are four hours each. Both sessions are given in one day. There are 180 multiple choice questions on the exam. Each question has four options, only one of which is correct. Most problems must be solved in SI units, though US units may be needed for some calculations. The FE exam is a supplied reference exam. This means that when you enter the exam room, you will be supplied with the Fundamentals of Engineering Supplied Reference Handbook, which contains many of the equations, tables, and graphs needed to solve the questions on the exam. This is the only reference you are allowed to use during the exam. The handbook is available for download at no cost from the NCEES website. You will not be allowed to bring any personal reference materials into the exam room. Every FE examinee takes the same morning session. The 120 questions must be answered within four hours. It covers a broad range of subjects that are typically part of a four-year undergraduate degree. Subjects include math, probability and statistics, chemistry, computers, ethics and business practices, economics, statics and dynamics, strength of materials, material properties, fluid mechanics, electricity and magnetism, and thermodynamics. The afternoon session has 60 questions that must be answered within four hours. When you register for the FE exam, you will be asked to select the afternoon exam module that best corresponds to your undergraduate degree. The discipline-specific exam modules currently available include chemical, civil, electrical, environmental, industrial, and mechanical exam modules. If none of the discipline-specific modules are appropriate for you, you may want to choose the exam for other disciplines. Regardless of the afternoon module you choose, the questions on the afternoon exam are intended to cover concepts learned in the last two years of a four-year engineering degree program. 
The FE exam is called a no-choice exam, which means that all questions are scored and there are no optional questions. You record your answers to exam questions on machine-graded Scantron-style scoring sheets. Points are earned for all correct answers and no points are deducted for incorrect answers. You are better off taking your best guess at a question rather than leaving it blank. Your scores for the morning and afternoon sessions are combined for a total score. Though the afternoon session has half the number of problems, each problem is worth two points, so the morning and afternoon session scores have equal weight. The exam is not graded on a curve, nor is there any guarantee that a certain number of examinees will pass. To diminish the effect of variable test difficulty, NCWS uses a modified Angoff procedure to determine the suggested passing score or cut score. States may adopt the suggested cut score or they may set their own. Because the subject areas covered by the FE exam are broad, it is useful to set your review strategy early. The most successful strategy for passing the FE exam is to prepare in all of the examination subjects. Do not expect to earn enough points to pass just by correctly answering questions in your strong subjects alone. To get exposure to all exam subject areas, it is important to develop and adhere to a review schedule. PPI offers a free customizable study schedule available on its website www.ppi2pass.com. PPI also offers structured live and online study groups. Throughout your study, you should focus on stamina and recall. The FE exam can be physically taxing as it is mentally challenging. It is difficult to remain intensely focused and alert throughout the eight-hour exam time. Train for exam day by taking realistic sample exams at home. Also, make staying in shape a priority throughout your review schedule. In a time testing environment, it is important to either recall or be able to quickly find the information you need and then be able to quickly apply it to the problem at hand. Because the FE Supplied Reference Handbook is the only reference you will be able to use during the exam, it is important that you have it by your side as you review. As you study, note which information you keep going back to and work on committing it to memory. A few examples of the equations and concepts you should be able to readily recall include point-intercept equation of a straight line, quadratic formula, equation of a circle, Pythagorean theorem, equations for sine, cosine, and tangent, areas of a triangle and circle, volumes of a right circular cylinder and a sphere, multiplying two matrices together, calculating dot and cross products, calculating the mean and standard deviation, calculating simple derivatives and integrals, calculating maxima and minima and knowing their applications, and solving homogeneous first-order differential equations. For all information you can't memorize, focus on being able to quickly find it in the handbook. A few other tips to keep in mind while reviewing for the FE exam include obtaining a spare calculator, ideally one that is the same model as your primary calculator, and using it or them during your preparation. Use SI units for the majority of the calculations, and perform electrical calculations with effective RMS, or maximum values. Also, become accustomed to calculating to a maximum of four significant digits, as in most cases answer options will be rounded. As the exam approaches, Put yourself at ease by becoming familiar with the exam location. Knowing how to get there and what to expect the day of will help alleviate any anxiety. Though you will not be allowed to bring reference materials into the FE exam, it is valuable to prepare an exam kit. Include the letter admitting you to the exam, your photo ID, your main and spare calculators, snacks, tissues, earplugs, a wristwatch, and spare car keys. A second kit that can be used during the lunch break can also be quite handy. In it include a light lunch, reference books, dictionaries, the instruction books for your calculators, local maps, and any other things you may want to reference after each exam session. The most important thing to do the day before the exam is get plenty of rest. If possible, 
Take the day off work or school. Don't study and get plenty of sleep the night before. The day of the exam, allow yourself plenty of time to get ready and get yourself to the exam site. Plan to arrive at least 30 minutes before the exam is to start. This will ensure that you have enough time to check in and get settled. In addition to a familiarity with the exam subjects, there are a few test-taking strategies that you can learn to help you be successful on the FE exam. With a timed test such as the FE exam, it is important to set your pace and stick to it. During the morning session, you will have two minutes to solve each question. If you have not finished a question in that time, make a note of it and move on. Allocate about four minutes to each afternoon session question. Because you will not be penalized for incorrect answers, be sure to make a response for every question. Set your watch alarm for five minutes before the session will end and use this time to fill in an answer for every question you have not already marked. NCEES uses the expression most nearly in many of its exam questions. Answers are rounded to two or three significant digits, so an examinee should not expect the calculated answer to be among the options. You will need to round your answers appropriately. You should use good engineering judgment when selecting your answer choice. Be aware of whether to round up or down when you are asked for maximum values and minimum values. For maximum values, you may need to round down or else your answer will exceed the threshold. For minimum values, or those requiring at least a certain value, round up. For example, a question that asks you to select a fuse to protect against a calculated load is a minimum value question. You should round up and select a fuse option that will safely carry the current. If you are asked to calculate what load a beam may safely carry, which is a maximum value question, round down so that the beam's capacity is not exceeded.